Hey, this is Phil with Filmora, back with the YouTube marketing series. In this video, we're learning how to optimize our YouTube's SEO. So let's start with titles. How do we specifically make a title optimized for SEO so that it shows up in the search? The first thing you wanna do is make sure that your keywords are up front. Don't have a full sentence, then your main keywords for your video at the very end. Remember in the last couple of videos, we learned about SEO and keywords. We learned how to find the keywords that are best for your videos. Those are the keywords, the main words that people are searching for that will be related to your videos. Those are your keywords and those go first in your videos. Make sure that your video title is accurate. One thing that hurts YouTube videos is if there's sort of a spammy title that sounds interesting and seems cool, but then the video itself doesn't actually relate to that title. This will hurt your search results because when YouTube sees that a lot of people are clicking on a video, but then they quickly leave the video after only a few seconds of watching, that will hurt your video because that's telling YouTube and the analytics that these people are expecting a video that they're not getting based off of the title or the thumbnail. That's going to hurt your search ranking. Concise titles actually do well in the search results because they're easier to read. Imagine reading a list of search results and there's all these big titles and then there's a couple that are very concise and specific and they have the keywords in them, they're accurate. Those ones actually cl get clicked on more often than the big long titles that have lots of keywords. And that's my next tip is to don't keyword stuff. Don't have so many keywords in your title just for the sake of having keywords. Use only the specific keywords that are related, only a couple, and make it concise. And make sure that your title matches your thumbnail and vice versa, but when someone's looking at your thumbnail, it should represent what the title is saying too. If you are doing a series of videos and you have episode numbers, make sure that goes at the end. So make sure that the episode number or the series number or even your branding name, if you wanna include your brand title or your name in the video, make sure that goes at the end. And lastly with titles, you do have to make it a little bit intriguing. So the more intriguing, don't make it clickbaity, but if you can make it more intriguing so that it's a little mysterious, people are like, oh, what's this about? That's going to get more clicks. I just wanna show you a couple examples of YouTubers who I think do a great job at titling their videos. First is just an example of starting with the main keyword and then having your show title or the episode at the end. And that's with last week tonight with John Oliver. Um, he's a comedian on HBO. And you can see with all of his titles that it starts with the main keyword and he puts out a weekly show. So it's always about a trending topic. Guantanamo, police accountability, scandals, refugee crisis, birds, Labor Day. These are all key trending topics and they're words and key things that people, keywords that people are going to be searching for specifically in that week. And then he follows up with last week tonight with John Oliver because a lot of people will be searching for that keyword itself last week tonight or John Oliver. So having all those keywords in the title is important uh, because it will help his most recent videos show up and for people who aren't searching for last week tonight but are searching for specific topics such as Guantanamo, uh, Republican National Convention, Olympics, opening ceremony, these are main keywords that are trending and that will help those videos show up specifically in that time. Casey Neistat, keep talking about him and the reason is just because he does such amazing, an amazing job of creating that intrigue of trying to get people to click on his videos. Sometimes it's on the verge of a little clickbaity, especially with some of his, his thumbnails. Uh, and it's interesting because he's a daily vlogger, so a lot of his videos aren't about, it's not like a how-to tutorial about a specific topic. It's not a John Oliver video about a specific topic. He'll find a title and he'll find a specific moment in his daily vlog and he'll come up with the title about that specific moment and that's what he'll title it, even though the whole video is not about it. So for example, if you watch his latest video, it's titled My Own Learjet. 
That's intriguing. What does that mean? Did you get a a jet or or not? What what does that even mean? But probably if you watch this, it's only going to be two or ten seconds of the video, which is nine ten minutes long. Actually, this one's four, fifteen minutes long. So this is a guy that I would look at to see how he titles his videos. You don't want to make it too clickbaity. When when clickbait doesn't work is when you title something and it doesn't deliver on that title or that expectation. But for him, they gave us a BMW exclamation point or the $21,000 first class airplane seat. That's bait right there. I want to click that to see what that's about, but he delivers on it. And that's the difference between good clickbait and bad clickbait. Um, or really you wouldn't even call it clickbait if it's delivering. It's just an intriguing title. So check out Casey to see some good examples of titles. Okay, so that's titles. Let's move on to thumbnails, which work hand in hand with your titles. YouTube says that 90% of their best performing videos have custom thumbnails. So the three options that YouTube automatically gives you usually aren't the best options for a thumbnail for your video. We have to make sure that our thumbnails match what the viewers are expecting. So make sure that the thumbnail not only matches your title, but also matches what the, view, the video is all about. Another tip is to use distinct thumbnails for all of your videos. So sometimes I see YouTube channels where every thumbnail looks the same, especially if it's like a daily vlog or a talking head style video, and it's always just the person sitting there, the person talking to the camera. That's not going to help your search results and that's not going to help your SEO optimization because every video looks the same. So create distinct thumbnails that somehow describe what's going on in the video. And sometimes this means adding text to your thumbnails. Text isn't necessary, but sometimes it does help explain what your video is about. And the reason why I sometimes use text is not just for in the thumbnail and the search results, but when you're embedding that video on another website. When I embed my videos on my blog, the thumbnail is what shows up in that embedded video. And sometimes I want the text to be there to explain what the video is about. Be sure to use big, bold text though, because when that thumbnail is really small, it's hard to read the text. So you gotta make sure that it's legible. When you're actually creating your thumbnail, whether you're using Photoshop or Canva.com, zoom out and view it at the size that it would be as the thumbnail in the search results so that you have a good idea of what it looks like to everyone else who's watching it. It might look good when it's really big, but when you shrink it down, it might not. So make sure it looks good when it's shrunk down. The main thing though is to stand out from the crowd. Your thumbnail is there to help you stand out. When I'm creating a video, I'll search for that video topic and I'll see what other people's thumbnails look like and I'll use colors and imagery that's different so that it stands out from those other search results. With descriptions, this gives you a lot more room to include keywords that will help your video show up in search. So write searchable descriptions using keywords that people will be using to search for your video. So if you couldn't fit in all your keywords in the title, then add those to the description. Again, not keyword stuffing. You can actually get penalized if you're repeating your keyword too often. So only use your keyword a couple times, once or twice, but include more keywords. So for example, when I'm reviewing a camera, say let's review the Sony A7S II cam photo and video camera. In my title, I might include the keyword Sony A7S II camera review. But in the description, I'll include words like photography, video, maybe some other specs for the camera, maybe mirrorless camera. So those are other words that I would include in the description. One thing to keep in mind is that the first couple sentences of your description show up in the search results. When you're searching on YouTube, and go ahead and do it right now, not only does your title appear, the thumbnail appears, but also a couple of the first lines in your description. And so this is a good chance to further explain what your video is about and make sure that people who are searching for it 
are intrigued about what this video is. If it's some random text or links that's not related to the video, people will be a little bit more hesitant about clicking that link compared to a video description that adds to the intrigue of that video. After the first couple of lines that show up on the search results, use the next line or two to add any links that you want to appear above the fold. Above the fold is a line on the description where people have to click to show more of the description. Having it in the description above the fold is important so people automatically see it on the watch page. You don't want to include too many important details below the fold. And that's tricky because there's only a few lines that appear above the fold. And so it's a balance of what specifically you want to show. Below the fold and with the rest of the description, just add more sentences about the video so that if there's anything that you want to add or clarify from the video, you can add to the description. You could add links to your channel, to your other social media pages, to your website. You can have calls to action, specific questions you want people to comment on or comment about or anything like that in the rest of the description. You can also use links to playlists to encourage people to watch videos related to that video that they might be interested in, or even link to specific timestamps in your video. And this is good if you have really long videos. People have a very short attention span. So if the video is longer than a couple minutes, then they might get bored. And so to encourage people to watch more or to at least jump to a part of the video they might want specifically, you can link out to specific timestamps to help people navigate that video. One other idea to help your video show up in more search results is translating your description, or at least the first few sentences that have your highly relevant keywords. YouTube obviously contains videos in all languages and there's going to be people speaking all languages searching for videos. But some people who might be searching in Spanish or French or Mandarin, they might also understand English. And so if there's a great English video and vice versa, you might speak Spanish or French or Mandarin, and you might want to watch a video in another language, but it won't show up if, it's not, if it doesn't have keywords in that language. So that's one cool idea. And the other idea to make this more efficient is to use your channel default settings. You can have all of your relevant links that you put for all of your videos set up so you don't have to copy and paste or type it out every time. The big no-no for descriptions is to not list out keywords. Don't use your description like you use the tags, which I'll talk about next, where you it's literally just a list of keywords. This won't help you and this will actually hurt your search engine optimization. So let's talk about tags. Tags are the extra section, which really do help your search results and Google and YouTube uses the tags to see what videos are related to a topic. These are your keywords and really have it focused. Only include tags that are related specifically to your video. You don't have to worry about punctuation. You don't have to worry about the length of the tag. Every word that you have in your tags gets accounted for by Google. What I do is just include the specific keywords that I have in my title and my description, keeping it simple. And that's what Google and YouTube want. Great, I hope you have enjoyed this video and now you feel more comfortable optimizing your own YouTube video. So the action item is to go out there optimize any future YouTube videos, but also check out your previous video uploads and make sure that the titles, descriptions, tags, and thumbnails are optimized. Thanks for watching and in the next video we'll talk about using YouTube cards.